This is the Munchies Guide to Hollywood. Mm. We're exploring the boundaries, literally and figuratively, of a neighborhood that looms large in our collective imagination. It's a little Hollywood touch. Right? It's a little Hollywood touch. Yeah. We're taking it from high-end, chef-driven restaurants to the finest Armenian deli located in a strip mall. Oh, wow. We have chef power, star power, and food power. I would find myself fantasizing about something like this. It's beautiful. We're hitting the strip. Welcome to Hollywood! We're picnicking in graveyards. Oh, man, sleep with your lights on. The fool is back. I'm sweating it out with the spiciest curry. Yeah. Wow, real flavor. From the most old school to the newest of the new school. Wow. The best way to experience the beautiful cross-section of Hollywood is by eating. That is really fucking good. Can I get some tops for the hidden treasures, please? I grew up on the Sunset Strip in my family's Thai restaurant. I followed in their footsteps and have my own spot, Night Market. We specialize in Thai drinking food. It's spicy, bold, and flavorful. I always talk about how Night Market is more of like an LA restaurant than it is a, a strictly Thai restaurant. So this is our pastrami patkimau. Langer's pastrami drunken noodles. Langer's is like the iconic LA Jewish deli. My tastes are influenced by growing up here in LA, being an LA kid. We obviously are based in Thai food. We used to do only 100% super, super traditional food in the Talisai era. Talisai was my family's restaurant that opened up in 82, the same year I was born. Our histories run concurrently and are totally intertwined. I was basically hanging out here, in the kitchen, sleeping in the office. All my non-school hours were here. When my dad and my grandma opened Talisai, my father was in LA working off a loan that he got to go to grad school. You know, he wanted a place that was like Hollywood. And not like Hollywood the place, but Hollywood the mindset, you know? Like he wanted a Hollywood Thai restaurant. Hollywood at that time were many Thai restaurants. They were really seedy, like hole in the wall. We started with the idea of trying to appeal to the upscale segment of the market. We didn't know that the A-listers and all the legends from Bob Dylan to the Mick Jagger love it. You know, the, so it was a pleasant surprise, it's right? It's a pleasant surprise. As an immigrant in LA that opened one of the most popular high-end Thai restaurants, my father had a very unique understanding of Hollywood and made it a point to show me everything the city had to offer. Whether it was fine dining or an unexpected mom and pop restaurant in a strip mall, we ate it without prejudice. I think about it a lot that it could have been that you never even ended up in Hollywood. I can't imagine if I had to grow up in a place that wasn't Hollywood, you know, what I would do, you know? Let's drink to that. Let's yeah. drink to that. What makes the eating in Hollywood so unique is the variety in food and experiences. It's a place where you can go to a Michelin-starred restaurant for a seafood-focused tasting menu, then drive two miles east to a Chilean deli for empanadas. I've driven by Rincón Chileno about a million times, and today I'm stopping by to try their specialty, empanadas. Este restaurant has been here since 1973. It started my mother and her husband trying to have a place for people from Chile who were fleeing from the political problems. Good morning. Good morning, Ricardo. How are you? How are you? Welcome to Rincón Chileno. So, so you're ready to eat empanadas? Empanadas? Yeah. OK, let's do it. You are taking care of your belly? I, I need to. So yes, the baked I one. I need to. <laughs> OK, so let's do one of the baked ones. Right? And then pick up a good Chilean wine. That's the best combination. Red wine and an empanada? Red wine that's and the way empanada to do it. is gorgeous. I'm going to give you two beef, two chicken, two spinach and cheese, and two ham and cheese. Can I heat Could them up? Wait a couple of minutes. I'm going to reheat them. OK, great. Thank you. OK. Ricardo is heating up, I think, 50 empanadas for us, and it's before 10 AM. And he's insisted that we have to have a bottle of red wine with the empanadas, because you can't have empanadas without wine. So I'm excited. El señor Ricardo me puso un maestro chileno, y este es el pino. 
pasas, huevo, aceituna. Se le pone pegamento para cerrar la empanada. Esto es lo que la distingue. Se pinta con esta pintura antes de que se, va, se metan al horno para que queden doraditas. Do you have a favorite flavor? My favorite are the beef one. Can we taste these together? Will you, will you have one with me? Together with what? To eat together. Together with wine. Yeah, come, yeah. come help me with the wine. That's a, a good choice. Ricardo picked out a Chilean red and finally agreed to sit down with me. This is for who? That's for you. Oh, for me? For you, yes. All right. You're very generous. No, I can't, you can't let me drink alone. OK, Thank let's you. make a toast. Let's make a toast. For a new customer new and friends. a new friendship. New friends, oh, love cheers. it. Cheers. Salud. Salud. So what do we have here? In Chile, we usually eat, use our hands okay. to eat Let's empanadas. Do that. You have two different types of salsa? Mm. The green one and the red one. Juicy, eh? That's fresh out of the oven. Yeah. It's delicious. Home. What's inside of this? This is ground beef? This is a ground beef with onions. Onions? And condiments. And the dough is made with eggs milk. It's very rich, the outside. It's very hearty. It keeps you full all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this. This one looks like the ham and cheese. Let's try this one. Yeah. It's different. Yeah, because it's got cheese. South American hot pockets. It's our typical food for 18 de September, which is Independence Week. Ahora vienen los nietos de los primeros clientes que tuvo mi mamá. Gente que apenas habla español, pero el gusto por las empanadas y por la comida chilena no han perdido. Chilean people don't, don't gather in, in one area. They are yeah. all over, spread out. But your restaurant is the gathering place yeah. for the whole community. Mm -hmm. This is the place where they, they meet the shop. I can toast to that. Congrats. What? Congratulations. Salud. Gracias. Salud. Every restaurant owner dreams of creating the ultimate neighborhood gathering place like Ricardo has done. I'm curious to see how you do that when you're in the heart of Hollywood. This is ground zero for Hollywood. We're on Hollywood and Vine. Just up that way is the iconic Capitol Records building that you see in every single photo. There's definitely a lot of history. And it's fun to come up here as someone who is from LA because you kind of take it for granted. You know, you forget that it's up here, but it's now home to one of my favorite restaurants. So there's a reason to come up here. APL is the newest restaurant from chef Adam Perry Lang. Originally from the East Coast, Adam's specialty is all things meat. He's a veteran of fine dining institutions like Le Cirque and Danielle and recently opened his first restaurant in LA. Adam is one of the most involved restaurant chef owners I've ever seen. This guy oversees all aspects of the meat, cuts every steak, and even forges his own fucking steak knives. If you see his Instagram, you know that his commitment and dedication reaches far beyond the restaurant. From his whole fitness get down to a daily meditation practice, Adam is one of the most driven chefs I've ever met. I, I just need to meditate for like five minutes, like sit down, he's gonna do it with me. I'm spending a day in the life of chef Adam Perry Lang. We're about to start a workout and I really hope I don't die. We're at Malad's Beachbody Fitness. The name alone is, is crazy. I'm extremely hungry because he told me to come on an empty stomach. Adam is, is so much about his process. I think it's very taxing on his body, and so he has to basically be in like superhero shape to do it, and he is. Hey, buddy. What's up, chef? How's it going? How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm so happy you're doing this. So we're just gonna do things nice and easy, you know? I'm not here to kill you. I want you just to like make connections, okay? Okay, I've accepted it. Working out is very, it's a foreign concept to me. Yeah, when was the last time you worked out? About six to eight months ago. I've been training Adam for two and a half years. So the system that we set up is just really about balance, proprioception, perception, lots of flexibility, range of motion, joint mobility, all those things that you use during regular life. This feels amazing on the feet. I don't know how you guys are gonna tie this in, but bless you, you know. <laughs> you fun? Yeah. Come with fun. me every day. So do you do this every day before yeah. you, you go to the restaurant? Yeah. yeah. I heard six days a week. Uh -huh. We're warmed up now. This is a warm up? Yeah. It's wild. I make this the worst part of my day. This way, everything else is easy. It's all stress. Don't matter when you get to the kitchen, you get from exercise. It's just overload your body with stress, and you know you overcome that. 
And then you turn around, you service is easy. Control the ball. There, good. Now switch directions. The switch. A belly button to the back. There you go. That's it. <laughs> OK. Hold on. Boom, that's it. Isn't it fun watching this? <laughs> I feel simultaneously the most dead I've ever felt and the most alive. This whole type of workout seems so systematic to me. Are you very systematic with what you eat also or no? Not too much. I just love process. You know you're a great chef because you've done things over and over and over again. Mastery comes from repetition. That's it. I survived the workout, and I hope this guy likes to eat as much as he likes to teeter around on pipes because I'm fucking starving. Adam took me back to APL to show me his dry aging process, and hopefully I'll eat something soon. How many pounds is this? 22,000 pounds. 22,000 pounds of, of dry aged beef. Each dry age that you get to experience is as unique as the person dry aging it, their environment. I don't even call this a dry age room, I call it an environmental chamber because I create and coax the environment to carry a certain type of white ashy mold, which you'll see here, and I rotate around the fans, create more airflow, I adjust the temperature, so I'm constantly just really managing molds and dehydration. I don't cut for the bones. You don't eat the bones. I go through. There's certain muscles that are good. It's also very soothing to do. It's very zen-like, you know? It looks cool, too. It's like, it's like clean. It's beautiful. But the tenderness is the thing. You see that? I know that you went back and forth whether to think about this place as a steakhouse or as just APL restaurant. I never called this a steakhouse, an APL restaurant, because I wanted to build a neighborhood restaurant. It just so happens that my specialty is beef. I also have a real, uh, you know, I love to pay an homage to kind of like a purpose. I love traditional steakhouses, and I don't really like to mess or put spins on things. Some days I feel like it's a steakhouse. Right. Other days, you know, I'm putting my Jewish specialties. I mean, how many steakhouses do you see have matzo ball soup on the menu? But it's freaking the best matzo ball soup I think you'll ever have outside of maybe your grandma's. I don't want to compete with anybody, you know? Oh, shit. Sure. It's good. That is really fucking good. Who doesn't like chicken with dumplings? I mean, it's just, essentially, it's like. Mm -hmm. We have the wedge salad. It's got a big, thick slab of bacon on there. Yeah, oh, I love it. After that workout and literally not eating the whole day. It feels good. Mm. Oh, my god. So the linguine and clams, and so this good. is the French onion soup, right? And it's so beautiful, you know? 20 years from now, people are still going to want linguine and clams, and people are still going to want an amazing steak. I believe that will never go out of style. Yeah. Now for the main event. Oh, that's the chuck steak. Smells good. Oh, beautiful. The size, the chops, the steak. So that's one of the steaks that we cut downstairs. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Which one's about 100 plus days? <laughs> Nothing like salty beef. I'm yeah. a lucky man. Fuck, we are lucky men. This dish right here, the tomatoes and onions, is this an ode to, to Peter Luger's? Yes and no. If you look at this dish, there's a lot of things going on here. And one is the parsley. My grandfather would always tell me to eat the parsley on the dish because he said it was good for my blood. But here it's a salad without the leaves. It's one of the few times when you can really like eat an onion like an apple. <laughs> I like that. How do you feel about being in Hollywood, literally on Hollywood? I've got a certain amount of activity on the streets, there's a touristy element, so there's curiosity on the streets. There's also like an undercurrent of some like mischievous things going on yeah. as well. A little bit of crazy out there too. and Which is important. Yeah. yeah. And then this building is LA's first skyscraper, 1923, 13 stories. Charlie Chaplin's office was in here. Audrey Hepburn, the star is right outside. Just like I felt connected. It all came together, huh? Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's great. At this point, APL is two months in, right? I'm not looking to like jump out of the gate and like put my flag on. I'm still a newbie here, but I'm committed. I'm not leaving anywhere. I live in LA. I'm not, I love LA. OK, 
can't get over this fucking steak. Oh, it's so tasty. It's so tasty. <laughs> this is unreal. I'm kind of proud of myself. <laughs> you should be. You should be, my friend. <laughs> the food at APL is classic and straightforward, but with every bite, you understand the thought and technique that goes into each dish. I'm heading to Baru on Santa Monica Boulevard, which is the total opposite of the dining experience at APL. Very similar when it comes to technique and approach. In 2015, Chef Kwang Er uh, opened Baru with his friend Matthew Kim. Born in South Korea, Kwang moved to the U.S. to attend culinary school and worked for just about every fancy restaurant you could think of. Part restaurant, part library, part fermentation lab, Kwang's vision and drive are infectious. Every big plastic container, that's kind of kombucha. So we have a few different flavor of kombucha, for example, like lemon verbena and rose. We also have a few different kinds of pickle. It's like a mustard green. This is watermelon rind pickle. It's kind of staple ingredient, especially in the Asia country. So awesome. This is a new special. It's handmade pasta with a toasted pine nut and tofu bechamel. Can't wait to try it. Thank you so much, Chef. It's so creamy with everything that Kwong does here, and even with the fresh leaves in it, the mint, the dill, it's, it's quite special, yeah. You know, Chef has worked at all these big name, buzzy temples of gastronomy, but I feel like he's created his own. This is the place that food fans should be making pilgrimages to. It's literally a strip mall next door to a 7-Eleven, and you're having food that is transcendent. We're so lucky that a place like this exists. There was nothing like it before when you opened up. There really was. How do you think of Baru? Is there a way that you define the food here? We try to be ourselves. Also, still trying to have nothing to lose mine. Right. I just want to put all my learning from so-called fine dining and the great restaurant in the world, more like a casual way. So okay. many more people can obsess to food. That was kind of intention. This is seaweed chip, so we just cook it in the deep fryer. So it's like a seaweed chicharron, kind of. Kind of, exactly. Is this your first time making this dish? Made yeah, so I don't know. You amazing. can criticize, actually. So just mix it, and then you can actually try this one. Maybe I'm going to try to make like a bar version of that roll shrimp marinade yeah. in soy sauce. So. That's phenomenal. Is it? You were not only a cook in the Korean army, but your job was to cook for the general, like a private chef. Yes. For general, I actually learned really traditional, authentic way how to make Korean, like a kimchi jjigae, kind yeah. of kimchi stew. It seems to me like it's a formative experience. Maybe taught you a lot about, you know, gave you character and that kind of thing. And me personally, just goal is just open the restaurant in out of the, my country, right. because I just want to challenge before maybe getting home. So I'm making like a fried chicken rice bowl because our favorite fried chicken sandwich is night market. So it's kind of homage, I guess. And you can just kind of mix it all together. True to Baru form, they take that really basic notion of like fried chicken and they turn it into art. It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. thing. I remember telling people that Kwong's going to leave one day and he's not even going to tell anyone. He's just going to disappear one day because he feels like doing it. Maybe there is a chance. Absolutely, I want to do that. Maybe I kind of change my mindset. I don't want to say like a mature way, but more like kind of flexible, having more, a little bit more flexible. By just traveling a couple of miles, you can have a taste of Chile, the ultimate steakhouse experience, and eat a mind-blowing meal at a Korean-inspired strip mall restaurant. This is just the beginning of my Hollywood food adventure. <laughs>